have uh, plenty of time to cool down. We don't deserve you, Devin. <laughs> you give us You'll all figure these wonderful it out. things. Don't worry. Right. Growing pains, I believe. All right. Okay, so the one thing is that Dill used to have no experience in this matchup, and then Numbers started playing Bayo. And, of course, his Bayo is a kooky Bayo. <laughs> like, I don't know whether to call it patient or not. <gasps> Ooh, but this is where, uh, yeah. That's where nothing right. happens. Yeah, okay. I thought, nope. something, I thought something big was about to burst out, but... Instead, we have Dill with the percent lead, and he is going to outpatient uh, Masato if he has to. Yeah, with Banana in a hand, Dill is notorious for being able to play incredibly patiently and take very easy control of the stage, forces his opponents to try and move through a plethora of obstacles just to get to him, and for that situation to be quickly reversed. However, the nature of Bayonetta allows for Masato, if he maintains his own cool, to throw the situation right back around on Dill. Okay, nice crab combo coming out from Dill. He's tacked on a heck of a lot of percent. And I think that's very interesting. Like, if it were a different character, they probably would have thrown him off stage. But that probably means that Dill is not very confident in his ability to, like, edge guard Bayonetta, which is a fair assessment. The character is very difficult to actually manage to, uh, like, end off the level. <gasps> oh, yeah, this character comes back. You don't got to worry about her. Although, a very good call on Dill being able to back off a little bit, seeing the danger of his uh, bananas getting witch twisted. <laughs> and uh, very smart on Masato, knowing that the barrels uh, have a mind of their own and will chase after you, even that though was, they're definitely not programmed to do that. That was like a like Jaws. That was a shark movie. <laughs> oh, wow. He actually manages to do it right there. And that is why it's so hard, especially if you're a player who, you know, consistently racks up damage and like that's the way you play very safe like dill because eventually you get them to kill percent they have a lot of red and a lot of rage and all of a sudden your game plan falls apart with one solid read a lot of knockback good amount of rage and some questionable di allowed for masada to bring things into his favor all of a sudden all right and now we're seeing masada with the lead let's see how he plays it okay looking for an air dodge there but Dill very smart doesn't give it to him Oh, Masato. That's not how that works. And it gives still just the opportunity he needs to grab his banana and get on the go. All right, hanging out there on the Smashville platform. Oh, okay, yeah, that was really good on Masato. Had a read on Dill's timing there. Uh, didn't necessarily capitalize on it, but it, it let him stay evasive as he is slowly just tacking on little bits of percent with these bullet arts. Like, Masato has no need to approach on Dill. And he's managing to just chip away very nicely. <laughs> Something was interrupted over there by the banana. And I feel like the banana definitely going to be coming in clutch a lot for Dill as we move forward. If anything, as a defensive option. Because Masato likes to stay very mobile without committing to a lot of uh, aggressive options. Yeah, that banana, when you throw it in the air, can cover a lot of space. Uh, the only problem is, so we've seen it already a few times, that it can trigger which time. And that will either give Bayonetta the opportunity to use those invincibility frames to get an opening, or just to straight up, you know, end Dill's life. Whoa, speaking of ending lives, Dill actually going to turn that around and closes out the stock. He's already taken 78%, but if he keeps that play sh patient play style, Diddy Kong just racks up damage so consistently. Well, speaking of the notion of racking up damage, Masato's done a fine job of doing so during his first stock, having Dill already sitting at 91 and counting. Oof. I love the, the throw up that uh, Masato did. It's very interesting where even though technically, like, I think he would have... Oh, okay, he's out of there. No, he's not. He's back in. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gangland here. Just straggling for a uh, finisher. Okay. Oh, he's looking for the angel drop. I mean, I know the idea behind it. That could have ended Masato's stock really early. But it doesn't work very well on Bayo, as you just saw. She has hitboxes just count that. Oh! <gasps> Banana out. Great mash. Yeah, these little flurry of attacks that you had mentioned are allowing to even up these percentages, but he's bleeding at 130%. And Masato just waiting for his opening. Doesn't even particularly need a ladder combo, just any confirm it's a back air from either side of the stage puts still in peril. Oh, yeah, one of the really hard parts when you're fighting against Bayonetta at these percents is all of a sudden she has so many kill options available to her. <gasps> He gives her the... Okay, he gave him the air dodge, but what the, with the drift, he wasn't able to uh, really land the up air. But all of a sudden, we're looking at a very even game. <gasps> He's going to have so much lag. That's it. An amazing comeback from Dylan. You see him shake it. He, I don't think he thought he was going to take that one based on his expression at the end of it.
Yeah, that was a bit of a messy end to the stock, but very good on Dill being able to just sort of track uh, wherever Masato was trying to land and punish accordingly. Yeah, and Masato kind of committed too hard because he kept on using his specials to you know, delay him coming back down to the ground, and eventually that meant that he would have a whole heap of landing lag if he were to come down. Dill, knowing that, just throws out the... Uh, I'm glad you could finish that thought, but like just looking at Masato's face, that that is a man who was just not having it for like a good 20 seconds, <laughs> just straight face. Th there, there, he's right back to not having it. Like, woo, woo. Sorry, that's enough monkey business. Back to game two. Well, let's see if he'll have it this time around. Uh, we are getting the clean slate, and but remember that stock one when Dill had the percent lead, he was so good at maintaining it, uh, and Masato needed that big read to close the stock out early. Uh, I'm not sure if necessarily he's going to need that same, you know, big play. But right now we're already, uh, Dill is just tacking on this damage. Oof. Yeah, not quite the big combo that I think Masada was hoping for. Yeah, right now I think the game plan is just survival. Allow Masato to get himself back calm and collected. Try and bring the uh, game two to a different result. It's just sort of even himself... As uh, Masato had struggled a bit with taking stocks from Dill, and it gave Dill plenty of opportunity to reverse a lot of situations on Masato, take back control of the game ultimately. But considering how back and forth game one was uh, at the end of it all, I could see this being another nail biter of a game. Oh, yeah, especially considering that this is actually closer than game one was by this point. Okay, here maybe is the big opening. A lot of damage, but. You know, we've seen that Dill needs a lot of... T oh, he went for that really hard charge on that. He knew that he wanted, like, he really needed the kill, but that extended maybe a little bit too hard. He gave up some possibly precious damage. A good call out from Dill with that forward air allows him to continue uh, controlling the stage. Banana in hand and prop guns at the ready. That entire base platform is Dill's command. And the Sovereign needs to figure out a way to try and puncture through this. Or else it's curtains for the stock. A very handy lead in Dill's favor. At the same time, Dill has been getting has been like really good at not getting caught by the Bayo stuff. Um, I'm not sure whether that's because uh, Masato is dropping those combos or because his SDI is on point. I'd like to imagine it's the latter. Uh, makes everyone look good. Uh, but at the same time. Like, Masato has to think up some other game plan for closing out early stocks like this. Ooh, because if he's not careful, he gets caught like that. And all of a Ooh. sudden, not only does he, not only is he down in percent, but a down by a whole stock. He has to really, I, hopefully he doesn't start fishing for the kills. But, you know, when he's down by this much already and Dill is so good at racking up percent, you just need to make something happen. This timing the witch time on the uh, banana. Masato not able to pull out anything. And it's becoming more and more of a daunting test to end this stock on the Diddy. That's like the third, uh, the third witch time that's like completely whiffed the banana and left him open. Okay, a nice forward smash for some solid damage. And putting him once again on the ledge. He should make it back to spot now. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in Bayonetta town here. Yeah, but even with that, that missed tech left the Sato dangerously low on his resources for coming back to the stage. He managed it just fine, but... Oof. Yeah, look at this. Over 100% now. He's lapped him a while ago. And all of a sudden, Dill looking pretty confident in the way he's playing. Throwing out peanuts, knowing that even if he... Oh, actually, I'm surprised. Dill is kind of taking the initiative here when uh, maybe he should be just hanging back, not even pushing a single button. But generally speaking, he'd be better off waiting. He has no reason to approach. He still has two and a half minutes on the clock. And no real reason to give Masato the opportunity to take a lead. All right. And this is, where, start of it. this is where things get scary. All of a sudden, like what looked like a done deal, there are lots of ways that Dill could lose this game. <laughs> he has to be careful. Putting bananas on the ground now might be a huge risk that probably isn't worth it. But in the end, he's still putting it half stage to try and limit where Masato can run to. Still moving around and shield a lot is really smart because it's going to allow him to prevent the uh, chip damage. 
from the bullet art extensions that Masato's trying to chip away at. If Masato can get just a little bit of percentage, then he's in the opportunity to reverse this through one good combo. You know, but, I was saying how banana on the ground might be a bad idea, but Dill's placement of it has been so fantastic. Covering his butt, extending his combos. Right now, he's looking like he might be. Oh, maybe he isn't in such a good spot. Oh, uh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. That was a great start to a combo. <laughs> as Masato manages to turn the situation completely around. Uh, I'm looking at the smirk from Devin. Ah, oh, that that gave me life right there. So, uh, a comeback for a comeback. Uh, so whoever is in the lead for game three is a, is a goner. Yeah, <laughs> their, their soul is taken. They're sent to the shadow realm. Uh, their body is left at the old Xeno venue. It's it's just a grim story. <laughs> oh no, it's buried under all of the Chinese like store Chinese restaurant tables. <laughs> Isn't that what it, it feels like? Old Xeno is now like a Chinese restaurant with like f old, three tables. Old Xeno is old now an a, art gallery. It's that a hipster is art gallery. Completely empty with a single piece of plastic hanging in the center of it. Art. That's some message, though. Oh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the message is that uh, Zeno is now located uh, slightly further down the block. Ooh. Oh. See, this is why Devin... 62 Orchard Street now. This yeah. is, these are the segues that we had been <laughs> This is what you've for. been missing, yes. <laughs> All right. I mean, that, was, that was real quick, because we're getting into game three here. We missed I... hipster plastic, but we came back for game three. I don't know how to feel about this counter pick. Just because, uh, I mean, uh, then again, Dill did die on uh, on Smashville at like 10. So what difference will F like you know Town and City really make? It'll make the difference of about three percentage for each of the kill combos, which could be incredibly deadly. I'm just saying. No, no, I you, understand you, that. You as saw well. you, you saw a public execution of a monkey occur at like 16 percent. I know, so I'm saying that like. I, maybe he's just like, eh, I'm a goner as soon as I get hit by that move, so might as well go to a stage that'll let me kill off the top also. <laughs> okay, right now we're seeing uh, a little bit... This is similar to, like, game one and two. Dill coming out with an early lead. Um, but, yeah, already we've seen that that early lead means nothing by the end of the match. <gasps> okay. <laughs> that is in pre-patch. <laughs> the afterburner kick in the air is not necessarily the, um, the most lethal option now. Yeah, Bay Bayonetta, definitely still a terror in the skies, but not nearly as uh, as demonic as being able to just get a kill off of one spare hit. Okay. I don't know, maybe I'm desensitized to Bayonetta combos, but I feel like if you watch carefully to how someone responds from the first good hit, then you can see where the combo is going to get nasty or not. Then again, Bayos have tons of ways of mixing things up. You know, because I've seen players where it's like, I thought they were, okay, all right, all right. So let's talk about this. Let's get back to this match because Masato is down more than we've ever seen him so far this set. This is only 27% on Dill. If this were any other player, I would call it a wrap. But right now, he's a, you can see the fight is still in him because he knows he has a win condition. Oh. Oh, I'm trying to put on that extra pressure, but it ends up costing him as Dill gets that one little extra hit. And when you're down by this much, every you can't be trading, you know? Yeah, at this point in the game, Masato needs to worry about just going for damage. And then if the opportunity arises to try and take Dill somewhere. I don't know if off the top is currently the option, especially as we sit in the, uh, the platform list section of Town & City. But... Taking command of the stage is definitely something that Masato needs to do if he wants to have any hope of taking this match back into his hands and ultimately taking the set. Ooh, okay. Right now, these two players are very patient. Neither one of them wants to commit or pull up, like overextend. Okay, that banana down throw, not actually uh, going to connect the forward smash, but big meaty hit from Masato. Right now... I don't know. I, I, I okay. Well, okay. I was about to say that any point they can open them up, but yeah, we're we're sort of in the static phase. And just quickly reacting to the trip, just gonna go for a simple toss, get the damage you can from that throw. And here we go. This is what Masato has wanted this entire set, but it's not gonna kill. He recognizes that and decides to take him off the top himself. 
<laughs> well, you said it's not going to kill, and I, I was just like, mm. But uh, that, the up smash did not kill, but instead See? Masato conver converting beautifully. And that's what, you know, we were talking about before about the banana. And this is actually a better position technically than game two was. And Masato still took that. So, yeah, Do cannot get comfortable. He has sort of more options now that we have Town and City where he can kill off the top with up air a little bit easier. I think up smash definitely would do it at this point. Uh, that being said, <laughs> that smaller ceiling means he needs to be even more careful. Oh, that might be it. Yeah, yep. he's not going to fall out. And the end of Masato in winner's bracket as Dill moves on to winner's semis where he will fight another HO3K. Uh, it's going to be Ralphie. Yeah, Ralphie versus Dill.